if you love name exploit then please consider leaving a super thanks in the comments of this video it's a great way to make a one-time donation to the channel and help support name explain Disease is one of those words that have a really obvious origin when you take a moment to actually look at the darn thing. The word is simply a combination of the dis prefix, seen in words like disarm and disfigure and means without, and the word ease. This is because when you have a disease of some kind, you feel you're at dis-ease. While the origin of the word disease is kind of obvious and pretty fun, what isn't as obvious or fun to talk about are the names of a variety of different kinds of diseases diseases, illnesses, conditions, and viruses out there. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about all these different kinds of things, but just referring to them all as diseases for ease's sake. Perhaps the difference between them could be a video unto itself in the future. There are thousands of diseases out there, with new ones still emerging as we all know by now. The effects of these diseases can range vastly from making us feel a bit unwell, to making us bedbound, to unfortunately taking lives. So my heart goes out to anyone watching this video who is suffering from any kind of terrible disease or has a loved one suffering in some way. I don't want to trivialise any of these diseases because many of them well and truly suck. What compels me to talk about diseases however is of course all their names. We won't be highlighting every disease because there are literally thousands, but of the more well known of them they have some really unique names that don't sound like words we see in any other realm or field. Take the flu for example. These three little letters that make up the word of flu have caused so much havoc on our planet. Many people get yearly vaccinations against the flu because it can be that problematic. Flu of course is a shortening of the longer name of influenza. There aren't many other words in the English language that sound similar to influenza, and that's because influenza actually comes from Italian slash medieval Latin roots. It derives from the term influentia, which means influence. Why this disease is named after a word most linked with internet personalities today is because back in the past, it was believed that diseases and epidemics like the flu were influenced by the stars in the night sky. Though perhaps more common in the flu is the common cold. So common in fact that it has the word common in its name. As for why it's called a cold, well that is simply because the effects of a cold are reminiscent of what it feels like being in cold weather. Cold might not be the most interesting name at first glance, but there's something I really like about this name. That's the fact it is a great example of conversion. Conversion is when we take a word and change its class with no alteration to the word itself. Cold is a word that started life as an adjective and is still used as one to this day. But as a name for a disease, cold converts from an adjective into a noun. Something that is also fairly common is acne. Acne is a condition that happens to many over puberty, which causes spots and irritations over someone's skin. The name is believed to come from the Greek akmas, which means things like to rise out and to point or pierce. This makes sense as the spots that are caused by acne tend to point out and pierce through the skin. Another disease which causes irritants across the body is chickenpox. Chickenpox is one of those diseases which more or less everyone gets as a child. It's characterized by itchy red spots all across the body. Pox is a really archaic term relating to diseases coming from Old English meaning things like blister or ulcer. Pox features in the names of other diseases too like smallpox and mpox. But why is the most well known of kind of pox named after the flightless tasty bird? Well it seems to have nothing to do with chickens themselves. Despite birds being linked with all kinds of diseases, you can't actually catch chicken pox from a chicken, and the disease has never passed from chicken to human. Ever. There are multiple theories as to where this name comes from. One idea is that the blisters of the disease look like pecs from a chicken, or even like little chickpeas. Another idea has nothing to do with what they look like and instead relates to the severity of chickenpox, or lack thereof. While contagious and irritating, chickenpox aren't that deadly historically. All in all, they are pretty harmless. And something else that is pretty harmless is chickens. Chickens have a strong image of being dumb and harmless. So it makes sense why this mostly harmless disease would be named after them. Another condition that can kill in extreme cases like chickenpox is diarrhea, which as you can see in British English has an extra O in there for good measure. Diarrhea is when your stomach causes frequent evacuations of body waste. It's easy to joke about it but I'm sure we can all agree it seriously sucks. The name comes from Latin root, with the former half dia meaning through and the latter half of rea meaning to flow, so the name means to flow through 
through, which is very fitting to say the least. Asthma is a disease that affects the breathing of those who suffer with it. It is often combated with an inhaler, which have become commonplace in the lives of so many people. As this disease relates to breathing, it should come as no surprise that the word comes from the Greek azine, meaning to breathe hard, which comes from anemos, meaning wind. Another disease that can affect breathing is polio, which was once upon a time, and still is in some cases, treated with a large machine dubbed an iron lung, which helps with breathing. Polio is a lot rarer than it once was due to vaccination however, when caught it can cause breathing issues and paralysis. Like flu and influenza, polio is actually a shortening of poliomyelitis, with the polio part of the name come from an ancient Greek word for grey. This is because the disease affects the grey matter in the spine spinal cord, which causes the paralysis. Another disease that can lead to paralysis is scoliosis. This is characterized by a curve in the spine and can lead to all sorts of issues for those who suffer. This simply comes from the Greek scolios, which means bent. Logical enough, as I mentioned, this disease results in a bent spine. Multiple sclerosis sounds similar to scoliosis and can also result in paralysis too. This disease affects the brain instead of the spine however and can cause issues with movement and hand-eye coordination among other things. Sclerosis is once again Greek and means hard. This is because of the hard areas that build up in the brain which cause this disease. The multiple is simply because there are multiple of these areas more often than not in the brain. The disease is also more commonly referred to as just MS. Though Speaking of diseases that are known by their initials, this brings us on to HIV and AIDS, which are an initialism and an acronym respectively. These two diseases are very linked together and often confused. In its simplest form, HIV is the virus people get initially, and AIDS is one of the many viruses that people can acquire via having HIV. Both of these diseases relate to damage of the immune system and are extremely notorious. As to what these names mean however, well HIV it simply means human immunodeficiency virus, whereas AIDS means acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Both these names, when fully revealed like this, are fairly self-explanatory. As mentioned, they both relate to people having compromised immune systems, and this is stated clearly in the disease's names. Another disease that relates to the immune system is lupus. Lupus, explained very simply, is when the immune system cannot turn infections and the body's healthy cells apart, so simply attack everything. This word might might sound familiar to many as it comes from the Greek word for wolf. It is named after wolves because when examined, the disease made lesions on the body that look like the bite of a wolf. Another disease named after an animal is cancer. There are various kinds of cancer which have had an effect on lives of so so many people. The name comes from the Greek word for crab and is named as such because when studied in ancient Greece, the markings within the tumours reminded physicians of the time of crabs, as they were similar in shape. We have shared this story in way more detail and highlighted where there's also a star sign called cancer in a video unto itself a few years back. While not named after an animal, a disease very much linked to a specific animal is malaria. This disease, which can make people incredibly unreal and irritate the skin, is commonly linked with mosquitoes, as they are the creatures that give this disease to so many people, especially those in more tropical environments. The name is actually of Italian root, from malaria and means a bad air. This is because it was once thought that this disease was simply airborne as opposed to insect borne. While we know this disease isn't caused by bad air, that name has lived on. A disease that is much more airborne however is pneumonia. Pneumonia is a severe chest infection which can cause coughing and a fever. While this word might seem incredibly odd to us with that silent P at the start, it actually simply comes from the Greek word for lung, pneumon. Another disease that attacks a specific part of the body is hepatitis, which attacks the liver. It comes in multiple forms, ranging from hepatitis A to hepatitis E. This once again it comes from Greek, with hips meaning liver and the itis suffix meaning inflammation. This suffix is seen in other disease names, but not many have been mentioned in this video. As I said, we have thousands of diseases, we really can't mention them all here.
Though while we may keep on discovering new diseases, we are also able to phase out many old ones too, thanks to better treatment, understanding and vaccination. One of those being measles. This disease was akin to chickenpox, causing skin irritations. This term simply comes from Germanic origins, as opposed to Greek or Latin for once, and means blemish or spot. The mumps have too been greatly controlled thanks to vaccination. The mumps results in painful swelling under the lower jaw. The word is thought to possibly come from the Dutch mompen, which means to mumble on wine. It would have been named this due to the swelling around the mouth causing people with the mumps to, well, mumble and wine. Finally, let's talk about scurvy, an archaic disease linked with the age of piracy, which is still around today albeit not as common. It can result in weakness and bleeding gums. One idea as to where this name comes from is via the old Nordic term for sour milk, which seems fitting. Thankfully, the simple act of eating some fruit is enough to ward off any scurvy. This video topic was suggested by Caitlin Andreaskas, apologies about pronunciation, over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a Name Explain video and wish to enjoy Name Explain videos ad-free as well as get exclusive content and your name at the end of these videos, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just one dollar a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.